Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching. In this video, I'm going to show me building a mid server inside a Docker container inside Windows on my PC and connecting it to my personal developer instance or my PDI. That's right, lots going on in this video. We've got to get right to it because there's a lot to cover. First, let me show you. First step you do when setting up a mid server is you got to set up a user um, in order for that mid server to connect. I have one, I called it Windows Docker uh, Mid01. So you can see here I've got a user ID, a first name, and a last name, the bare minimum in order to set up that person or set up that user. I also had to set a password because in my PDI I have it left to where I can't actually write a password. So that generates a password. And then you've got to uncheck this password needs reset so you can actually use that password. And and then last piece here is I granted it the role of mid server. Granting it the role of mid server actually grants it the SOAP roles, which is how the mid server actually talks to your ServiceNow instance. After that's all done, that only takes a few minutes, you can go to this downloads page under mid server. And on the downloads page, there are two Docker recipes you have a choice to use there's Windows and there's Linux. I used the Linux Docker recipe not for any particular reason other than I know it's probably lighter weight and smaller and runs faster. So I clicked the download icon and that downloaded a nice zip file to my computer. I'll show you that zip file, what that looks like. So I've got it here, there's a zip file. I extracted it to this folder and in that folder you can see what comes in here. And this is all provided by ServiceNow. I didn't have to do anything with it. What I didn't do the first time that I did this is I didn't specify a Docker tag when I was building it. So you'll see here, I'm gonna bring over Notepad++ and you can see this Docker tag. Now, I didn't supply this or I didn't supply the path to this and so it built an image but it was like blank colon blank. It was really annoying. So I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard so I have it. I'm also going to show you Docker for desktop that I have no containers, I have no images. I'm recording this live, uh, no, very little editing, if any, where they'll be on this. So I want you to see the real deal and how this works. Next thing I wanna run is Windows Subsystem for Linux or WSL. And this basically is a terminal window inside of Windows that I can run commands on. And in this case, I'm gonna run Docker build and then I'm gonna provide the path to that particular um, Docker file or that Docker recipe that I just downloaded. So I know that is in the users folder under my first name with no N and then in my OneDrive folder and then in my OneDrive folder I have a Docker recipes and then you saw there was a folder that started with mid there. Now I do want to specify that tag so I'm just going to dash dash tag and then I'm going to paste in that value from that .env file that was inside the Docker recipe. I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna go off and build. Now, while this is building, I wanna show you a couple of things. Number one, so you see this real time and how long it takes. And number two, I gotta explain what the heck's going on. What is Justin doing? So I basically am using my PDI to build this really cool project. You're gonna find out more about that eventually. And as part of that, it's gonna have data. So it's not gonna just be backing up an app to GitHub, which if you haven't seen that video, you should go check out the video of me doing my source control and backing up my applications. That way if I blow away my PDI or it's gone, I can actually restore the application that I've been working on. But importantly, there's gonna be data. There's gonna be data on tables that I wanna back up. In my case, there's gonna be tables within my app. And then I'm also gonna manage my to-do list, the things to do, the things that I want to manage in a table and that's going to be data that I don't want to lose because if I lose it then I'd lose the whole purpose of this exercise that I'm going through. So with a mid server in ServiceNow I can drop files using export sets onto the mid server and then I can from that mid server in this case from a container I can then copy that out to locations. One of those could be my external hard drive on my computer, it could be on my computer, it could be to Amazon S3, it could be to OneDrive, it could be to Dropbox, it could be at all these different places. I have a bunch of ideas about what I want to do, but I need to get this mid server up and running so that I'm able to do that. Once this mid server is up and running, I'm going to provide it a path to a uh, to a file. Let me just pull this over here so you can see it. And uh, we'll just have this running in the background. Let's just see if it lets me open that in a new window. It is not being nice, so let's just drag over this whole thing here. Okay, so right above my head, you can see inside this file, this is the configuration for the mid server. So I provided it the URL to my PDI. I've got it blocked out right now. I gave it that user Windows Docker Mid01 that I created and I showed you at the beginning. 
There's a big long password that I took out of here so you don't see it. And then there's a server name. So this is the absolute minimum required. Now, should you be providing mid instance password in clear text on a configuration file in production? Probably not. For me, it's my PDI, it's not a big deal. I'm in control of this Docker container. I have pretty good security around my stuff, so I'm not too worried about it. But your mileage may vary. You may not want to store your password in a plain text file like that. So we're going to provide that parameter for how to get to that environment file when the Docker image is run. So what we're doing now that's just cleaning up is it's building an image. You're going to see when I pull up the images, it's going to be about a gigabyte in size. Um, and that will be what gets run when we actually run the Docker container, which is going to be our mid server, which will connect to my PDI and I'll show you how all that happens. So we're about done here. It's on the last stage eight of nine and we're going to export it and we're almost there exporting the image done. So that image is built. We no longer need that particular piece, but I want to show you what the image looks like. So let's come in here. There it is. I didn't even have to hit refresh. It's mid, it's tagged with Tokyo. It's got an image ID and everything I need. And there's that file size of 1.08 gigabytes that I told you about. So pretty slim, pretty fast time to actually realize that and get it built. So the last thing I need to do is run this. So notice I have no containers running. So I need to run this image. And the way I'm gonna do that is back in here, I'm just gonna clear screen for you real quick. And I'm gonna do Docker run. And then we're gonna specify that environment file, which is going to be in the same crazy location as before. So we're going to have to go users, uh, users with an S, just J-U-S-T-I, and then my OneDrive, and then in my Docker recipes, and then that big long folder name. And then in there, there's going to be mid.env is going to be the file. And then the image that I want to run is what I need to specify next. And that is right here on my screen. I'm just going to specify that image ID um, just to be sure it does the right one. So we'll just go B0A1CC269921, enter, and it should start that mid server. You can see it starting up now. Um, it's waiting for the mid server and it's going to go do a bunch of stuff. All right, so a bunch of stuff is going to happen. Now, if I come back over here, click on containers, we see that Charming Kalam. <laughs> Um, it's a random name that's generated for the container. It is now running. Once these containers are running, you can actually go see the log files that are running there. Uh, I'll just go ahead and minimize that one in the background. So I can see all that if I want to click on it again. I can see the stats. This is neat to see the impact, especially when I start backing things up, like I talked about how much memory they're using, how much CPU. That's interesting, 370%. Um, and then what's the network IO or input output? So I can see all that on my container and I can get to a command line interface for the container itself. That's gonna be important here in the end. Now, while that's up and running, it's starting to talk to service now. So let's go back to service now and look at the servers. So we see now it found that it's got the Windows, doc, Windows Docker Mid01, it's got a host name, it's got all that. It just started on September 7th at 1148 Pacific time, but it's not been validated. Um, so it's doing a bunch of stuff. I want to make sure that it's close to done. So it's checking packages and it did look like it installed some things. It's connecting to a channel for mid server. Um, should be okay. I'm going to go ahead and open up the mid server configuration. I'm going to validate it, right? So notice here, it's uh, status is up, validated is no, and it has to have a validated date and time, right? So I'm going to go ahead and part of that validation is it's going to restart the server. So uh, we'll just leave all that default and hit save and that validation should start and just to see what that looks like on both sides I'll pull up that window there. Let's see grab that down a little bit because this is going to change now It just went down So this is it restarting the mid server. You can see it just went down It is terminating you can see there and that's actually kind of behind my head. So you probably can't see it uh, Let's shrink this a little bit. There we go uh, that, that's good positioning on my head. So you can see these fields as they get updated. It did stop the server. Here it is coming back up. You can see the startup sequencer running on the logs over here. And we should see, yep, status just changed up right here. It is now validated. So that is a valid mid server. And we are good to go. That mid server is up and running. Now for the final piece of this proof of concept to make sure it does what I want, let's go build an export set real quick. If you're not familiar with an export set is, it's a way to get data out of service now and drop it on a mid server. So I'm going to create a new export set and we'll just call this the incident table. This won't be what I actually use, but it's just a good test to make sure I'm actually talking to it. Um, I don't have a definition, but I know 
where I want to export it to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick a target. And um, actually, that's the target I set up earlier. Um, so I don't want to use that one. So let's click new. And we'll just call this incident docker image and we'll pick this mid server and the file path I'm going to leave there. It's going to actually be in a folder called export, which is fine. And this will be demo uh, export set for recording. So we'll see that that looks a little bit different than my other one. There we go. And the what to export is the export definition. I think I will. That should be OK because it's the same incident table I set up before. Let's see if I can actually uh, show you what that looks like so you don't think I'm hiding anything there so it's just grabbing short description category updated caller ID so I could go change what fields it's, it's actually exporting but that's the definition I'll go ahead and save this definition and then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna test the export of those 20 records so let's see there test export of 20 records and let's go ahead and click that and that should kick that off and we should see that actually run. Now, if everything works great, it'll say it completed. Success, it actually worked, right? So that's what I wanna see. Now let's head back over to the Docker image, right? So this is the log file still running. I'm gonna switch over to the command line interface because I wanna see what that um, actually looks like. So now I'm on the actual container inside. And um, on these, it actually lives in this folder. So under opt uh, mid server, folder. I think there's an agent. Yep. So I'm going to go in the agent folder and then I've got this export folder that you see right here. So that's where my file should be if that actually works. So let's go in there and see, look at that incident table.csv. I'm just going to open it up in VI and see what that looks like. There you go. I've got a bunch of incident data. It looks like about 20 records like I'd want. So let's get out of there. And now that I have that, let's come over here. This is now my Windows subsystem for Linux. I'm going to clear the screen again. And I'm going to do a Docker, uh, oh, it's still, let me just control C out of this. Or right, control, where is it? Break, which killed it. Okay, so let's go WSL again. Should open new terminal window. Yeah, good. Okay, so I'm going to do a Docker CP. And um, the image, the it's container that's actually running is, let's see, Charming Calam. So we'll do Charming Calam. And then I need to specify that same path, which is slash OPT slash um, SNC. Uh, shoot, what was that again? Let's go back to the container. Since I didn't memorize that, I memorized a lot of things, but that was SNC underscore mid server. So SNC underscore mid underscore server. And then it was slash agent. And then it was slash export. And then it was uh, incident underscore table. CSV. So I want to put that into, let's just throw it into my OneDrive folder where everything else was. So we'll do users slash JUSTI slash OneDrive and slash, uh, I think it was Docker recipes, right? That's what I had open. So let's go open that folder before I hit enter and see under Docker recipes. I just got my zip file in my folder there at the moment. So let's come back here and we should see when I do this, it should copy that file over to uh, this Docker recipes folder. So I hit enter, it executed the command, um, and there it is. Look, it just popped up, incident table.csv. So I just got a table export. It was a test, right? But I got a table export out of my PDI. Uh, let's just open this with Excel. I got it out of my PDI into a container on a Docker image for a mid server, and then into a spreadsheet that now is really tiny. Um, on my local PC. So if you can imagine moving around stuff automatically and backing things up, this could be really, really helpful. So you just saw me build a mid server in a Docker container on Windows and connect it to my PDI and export a file using export sets all within this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in doing crazy things with their PDI. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.